<laughs> On Wednesdays, we wear periwinkle. Hello! A little earlier today because we have team bonding at Top Golf this evening. My least favorite place on earth. Anytime I get asked on a date if they suggest Top Golf, I say hard and fast no. Um, I'm not into Top Golf. I never think it's fun. My hands hurt. I can barely hit the ball. I don't understand people who like golf in general. It's genuinely the worst. Kicking or hitting a ball, you know, with a bat forcefully, I understand. Willingly being clobbered like in football or having to speak in a perpetual whisper like you do for golf. I don't get it. I'm too loud for golfing and hunting. And don't get me started on the food at Top Golf. It's like a trash panda's paradise. However, I do really like the people going that I work with. So I will make an exception and go for a little bit. To my what? Oh, they said thanks, Alex, in my earphones. Um, speaking of people that are helping me, I can't see myself. I can't see the um, live on any of my screens. So that would be hopeful. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Politics Live, my fellow little trash pandas. It is pop culture without the leftist propaganda. Every Wednesday, I might do a poll on the Politics Instagram asking you all to vote on the time of this live because with the time change, we might adjust it. So that's like been a little bit confusing and difficult trying to figure out because you know what sucks? This is the one thing. Well, there's two things that suck about living where I live. And if you don't know, I live in Scottsdale. I live basically Phoenix, Arizona. And in Arizona, we're on mountain time. So that is the absolute worst part of the country to live when time changes happen because Eastern time is all weird and then Pacific time and you're like somewhere in the middle and nobody knows what mountain time is. Like everybody's familiar with Central, Eastern, Pacific. Nobody knows what the heck mountain time is. I don't even know. So when it comes to trying to figure out like when I'm supposed to do things and stuff in other time zones, I'm having to ask like a hundred people for help on what the heck I'm supposed to be doing. Is everything fine? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. They're adjusting things. Don't mind them. It's like Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. There's only a very, very few amount of us females in the productions department at Turning Point USA. Everybody else is a guy and they're always helping us. Um... So, yeah, the time change. What are we talking about today? What are we talking about today? Tina Fey has a modern Mean Girls releasing in January. I don't know how this escaped me. I had no idea this was coming out. Did you know that this was coming out? So I'm going to. We're going to watch that trailer because it is absolutely shocking and we're going to react to that. I have a lot to say. And what's really interesting is that this trailer has totally divided the Internet and there's a lot of issues that people have. And then a lot of very funny gripes that people have, especially millennials, which I think the majority of us, you'll have to say if you're millennial or Gen Z or what generation you are. I guess there could be even more than that. But what generation you are in the chat, because I think most of us are millennial. Um, so it's funny because the things that the millennials have a problem with are, are very bizarre. Speaking of movies, and this is what I really want to talk about. Speaking of movies, I have to tell you about seeing Priscilla. I went and saw that over the weekend. Mr. Beast is getting criticized for digging wells in Africa. The woke mob is coming after him for basically charity. We're going to discuss that. Patrick Dempsey has been named 2023 Sexiest Man Alive. And I have this theory. I won't spend a lot of time on this, but I just want to say it. I have a theory that Kim Kardashian is actually trying to copy Taylor Swift as a brand revival move. That is what we're talking about on the show. You know somebody who talks like this? We all do. What is for dinner tonight, by the way? No lying, because I know I'm catching you right before dinner time on Eastern time this week, and I'm very curious, what are you actually making for dinner? Now, fun fact about me, one of my favorite no dinner dinners, and a no dinner dinner is what you eat when you are way too lazy or too tired to actually cook anything, and you also don't want to spend a ton of money, whatever, So, and you also don't want to be super unhealthy. My favorite non-dinner dinner 
is to one, I have my masa tortilla chips. They're like the seed oil free tortilla chips. You could also get siete or whatever, but I think masa chips taste 100 times better than the siete tortilla chips at Whole Foods. So I order those online. But I have my masa chips at home, and then what I do, my no dinner dinner is going to Whole Foods, and right when you walk in there, they have the house-made guac for sale. They've got like a mild one, and they've got a spicy one, and I get one lemon, and I get one little container of guac, the spicy guac, and I take that home, and I squirt lemon all over it, and I just cover, I coat that baby in salt and pepper, and I swirl it around with the same knife that I use to cut my lemon to squeeze on, and that is my my dinner. My dinner is guac and chips. It is one of my favorite easy life hacks. And in my opinion, I do not like any store-bought guac at all. I think they're all nasty. I have never had one that I thought was good. I only like guac at a restaurant that somebody makes homemade or whatever. I do not like buying at the store. This is the only guacamole I have found that is good. It, it is the Whole Foods made one. The Whole Foods made one that they make the day of. That is the only one. The other like guacs they sell at Whole Foods are absolutely vile. So what is for dinner tonight? No lying, even if it's a no dinner dinner. Thumbs up this live. And by the way, keep reminding people to thumbs up the video as they come in for me because it's hard for me to remember to say that like while I'm doing the stories. Subscribe to this channel or Real Alex Clark on Apple Podcasts if you are listening next day because I know a lot of you like to do that. Somebody's making shepherd's pie. You know what they say about people that eat shepherd's pie. Ooh, somebody's making chicken and rice and they call it special delivery chicken. I don't know what that means. Somebody's just having peppermint tea. She's on her eating disorder ish. That was a joke. Not promoting eating disorders at all. That was totally a joke. Dark joke. Someone's making a salad. Pizza, steak, and roasted sweet potatoes with homemade butter. Oh, Caitlin, I'm coming over. Jordan's making cracked chicken. What does that entail? Fentanyl? April? Leftovers? Okay, I don't actually, can I just tell you? I don't believe in leftovers. I do not eat leftovers. If I don't finish something, I throw it away. Is it privileged? Probably. Um, but it's not about that. I just genuinely think I've never eaten leftovers except soup. I have never eaten leftovers that I thought, wow, this tasted just as good as the first day. Absolutely. There's not one thing that exists. It is so disgusting. I would probably rather eat warmed up trash than warmed up leftovers. And I also don't believe in microwaves. I straight up do not use a microwave. So whatever I'm eating has to be warmed up on the stovetop or I'm throwing it out. I never, ever, ever get a to-go box at a restaurant. Never, ever do it. I don't. I, there's just I think people lie who enjoy leftovers. It's it's one of those things that I, I'm I'm convinced it's like a giant life troll. Like people that are like, oh, I'm having leftovers and I love it, love it, love it, love it. I think they just say it and it's like all a big joke and I'm not in on the joke. That's what I think is going on. Why can't I do anything in the chat? It's like, oh, here we go. I gotta close this poll. Um, all right. So thank you for being here. I know it's a little bit earlier, so there may not be as many of you because not as many people are expecting the live to be this early. But like I said, top golf tonight with the work people. New Mean Girls trailer has just dropped today, this morning, literally mere hours ago. This morning for me. I don't know what time for you. This morning for me. And the film is based on the Broadway musical adaptation from the original Mean Girls movie that was released in 2004. So if you remember, like, in the last, what has it been, six years or something, they came out with Tina Fey did Broadway, the Broadway version of Mean Girls. This movie is based on that. And the movie is coming out in the beginning of January. I don't know how I didn't know that this was going to be happening. It totally went above me. Uh, it didn't come on my radar. But Tina Fey is back in it. Jenna Fisher from The Office is in it. And Gory Rice is playing uh, Katie Heron. John Hamm is Coach Carr. Moana, the girl that plays Moana, I can't pronounce her name. I'm so sorry, but I can't. Moana is playing Janice Ian. And Renee Rapp, who is... Um, she's like a Gen Z pop star, lesbian, very blonde, very, very light blonde hair. Um, she is like the lesbian version of Olivia Rodrigo. She's playing Regina George. 
And it's weird because the the trailer came out but there's no music in the trailer from the Broadway musical and the and this is a musical movie but by watching this trailer you wouldn't know that they didn't include one song or snippet of the song or hinting that it's a musical at all it just looks like a regular movie which is very strange um but i i i did see mean girls on broadway and it was phenomenal. I actually, one New York trip that I had several years ago, I went with an ex-boyfriend and he, I, I knew the whole time I was planning on seeing SpongeBob the musical. That was what I was going to see. And uh, he surprised me with the Mean Girls, going to also see Mean Girls on Broadway. But I was there for SpongeBob. Can you imagine? This is why I'm single because, you know, like, it's like, well, what was it like dating Alex Clark? Well, I took her to New York and guess what she wanted to see on Broadway? SpongeBob the musical. It's kind of embarrassing, but it's also like authentic to who I am. So I don't honestly care. Middle fingers in the sky for SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh, great. I'm being told that if we show this trailer, then my live is going to get a strike mark on it. So I have to talk over the trailer. It might. So we'll just play. We'll play a little bit and I'll talk over it. So... That's going to be annoying, but let's just go. I'll see how fast I can talk. Oh, look. Crooked Heels, January 12th. Oh, hell no. The fight scene. There he is. This isn't your mother's mean girls. Move. Hey, PG-13, please. There's Tina. What was that? Oh, Lord, it's the queen bee. Regina There's the George. crew. Don't look her in the eye. That's the girl playing Regina. really hot. They changed, like, everything. I met a guy. Got to live, see Olivia Rodrigo in the song, but no musical. We'll be getting into abstinence, of course, then followed by John Hamm playing Coach Carr. You're learning things now that I don't know how to teach. Jenna Fisher. Are you okay in there? We're concerned you're either doing drugs or having a toilet baby. Ew. A new twist from Tina Fey. Women have to be able to support each other. Get in, loser. Welcome, Katie. You're never gonna believe what I found this morning. Your burn book. Mom, go make snacks. For sure, for sure, Regina, yeah. Okay, that's good, we'll, we'll stop it here. Oh, wait, no, wait, we can't. Actually, keep going. Oh, no, I don't have any. I Look who it is. Just... You're a mess. We will help you. Christopher back. Briney from The Summer I Turned Pretty playing Aaron Samuels. Why are you dressed so scary? It's Halloween. Katie, if you don't dress slutty, that is slut shaming us. That's just unprofessional. Okay, that's good. What? Just stop there. Okay, so. As you can see, the movie is, it's like the same concept, all the same scenes, but the dialogue is a little bit shifted and then they have new actors playing all the parts. And I have a question, is it too soon for a Mean Girls remake or a Broadway adaptation or whatever? But, but is it too soon? And here's the biggest indicator, in my opinion, that proves it is too soon, is that they said, not your mother's Mean Girls. Excuse me, excuse me. The majority of millennials who grew up in the cultural zeitgeist that is mean girls do not have kids at all, let alone teenagers yet that would be old enough to watch mean girls. Like that was so weird. It's like, do you know your audience at all? Number one, very triggering for us. I mean, come on, the youngest millennials are still only 27. If you are 27, Yes, if you are currently 27, you are the cutoff year for millennials. Anybody under 27 currently is Gen Z and, well, Gen Z and then Gen Alpha. But it, millennials, we are not old enough to have a 14, 15, 16, 17-year-old that will be watching Mean Girls. You know what I'm saying? What is that? The other hugely controversial thing that has totally divided the internet about this trailer is that they, de they, sh they announce that Christopher Brinley from The Summer I Turn Pretty is playing Aaron Samuels. So Christopher Brinley, if you watch The Summer I Turn Pretty, he is Conrad. He's Connie Baby. Connie Baby, as you can see, is playing Aaron Samuels. I'm laughing because here's the controversy. There were lots of comments that said the new Aaron Samuels looks like a serial killer and somebody else called him Pennywise Coded. 
Now, this picture's a little unfair. Is he Pennywise coded? Is that fair? Is that a fair subject? Conrad, Christopher Brindley is hot. Christopher Brindley is smoking hot. Is he, what is this gripe that he's not hot enough to play Aaron Samuels? I mean, he is the gen, I feel like he is like hot Gen Z version of Aaron Samuels, which is what this movie is trying to be. This movie is trying to be Gen Z Mean Girls. Well, Gen Z's idea of hot in a guy is not this like hunky manly man type of, you know, Aaron Samuels type. It is this. It's the like scrawny kind of like, um, what did I say? I just talked about this recently. I did a YouTube short. There's this trend, Gen Z, oh, dead eyes. Gen Z is obsessed with people that have dead eyes. It's like, it's like uh, Emma Chamberlain is the female version of Christopher Brinley in this like very, I'm always in the sunken place, dark circles under my eyes, very, very depression coded, miserable. I might drive my car, you know, off of a cliff. I feel like Emma Chamberlain has absolutely nailed that look. And so she's like the perfect person to think of if you're like, well, what is dead eyes? So Gen Z thinks that the dead eye trend like that you see on Christopher Brindley or Emma Chamberlain is hot. They literally want you to look like you're on the brink of death. And they're all, you know, Gen Z doesn't like to wear makeup or hardly any at all. It's like the complete opposite of millennials who in the last five years were doing all this contouring and, you know, totally packing it on. I mean, absolutely, that's what I do. I don't look good if I don't have too much makeup on. I mean, face makeup for sure. I've got too much redness in my skin and stuff that I got to help. But um, the, f- the, the, the sheer fact that they are calling Christopher Brindley Pennywise coded in a serial killer is it just shows you the generational gap in what Gen Z versus millennial women find attractive. So um, I also want you to see this. Speaking of complaints about Christopher Brindley, here's a tweet. And I'm telling you, you got to look on Twitter because there's so many of these. This tweet said, where is it? I can't read that. I got to pull it up on my computer. I'm old. Uh, Here it is. Oh, yeah. This guy says it's like one of those knockoff films where they change the name slightly, like Bean Girls or something. (laughs) I... Don't think it seems knockoff. I ju- I think it seems legit. The fact that Tina Fey is in it and all these very iconic actors and stuff, including the principal. I can't think of that comedian's name. The principal is back. And it doesn't look knockoff to me because they've done knockoff Mean Girls already. They've done like Mean Girls 2 and all that. It looked like, you know, a D-list movie. I think this movie looks like it's going to be good. It's just a new version. But I just think it, I think we should have waited till Gen Alpha was teenagers to release this. Like that would have been the perfect time. I think that we are too early. We're too early on this. I, like imagine we could do a VeggieTales version of Mean Girls called Bean Girls. Couldn't we? Um, vote in the chat what you think. If it, overall reactions, predictions um, on this movie. Do you think that it's going to bomb? Do you think it's going to be great? Will it eat? Gen Z would say, will it eat? Um, and will you go see it? Bean Girls. Speaking of new movies, I saw the new Priscilla. Please pull up pictures of this. Guys, Sofia Coppola, am I saying her name right? Sofia Coppola, Coppola. Okay, I said it right the first time. I had a little, you know, when you like say say something and then you're like, wait, did I say it wrong? Sofia Coppola is my new obsession, fully my obsession as a director. Like that entire aesthetic of hers can be injected into my veins. Imagine if she would have done Barbie. Now, I mean, Barbie was just perfect as it was, but just imagine. And Sofia Coppola did Marie Antoinette, that movie with Kirsten Dunst. She did The Virgin Suicides. Please tell me that you have seen or read The Virgin Suicides. That book is one of my all-time favorites. And you know the part where the mom makes them, like, 
play their CDs or their records out loud and she breaks all of them because they say bad words or something. That is something that really actually happened to me. My mom made me break all my CDs that had a bad word in them at one point in my life. That wasn't a good day. Um, but that movie spoke to me as a middle school, high schooler. Love the Virgin Suicides. Love Sofia Coppola. So this movie was so phenomenal and so good. We got the Austin Butler Elvis. A lot of people are confused. Well, why would I go see this? We already got Elvis. No, you don't understand. You're missing the point. This movie was special because it was all about Elvis and Priscilla's relationship and... It was all told from Priscilla's perspective. Did not focus on Elvis's career at all. It just focused on them as a couple. I learned so much that I never knew about them. It was a fascinating pop culture movie. Nothing inappropriate. Uh, I mean, a little drug use, like, but it, nothing, nothing inappropriate. Um, if you actually do have a teenager, if you are old enough to have a teenager, you should take her to see this. 10 out of 10 for me. Jacob Alordi. While we are on the topic of hot Gen Z actors, Jacob Elordi can absolutely get it. Like, I am down bad for Jacob Elordi. Yes, 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 and yes. The fashion phenomenal. If you like watching Emily in Paris or Gossip Girl or whatever for the fashion, you will love Priscilla. Just so good. And your mom will like it and your grandma will like it. It's like a, it's a multi-generational movie. You know, we've got Thanksgiving coming up. And I know people are always wondering, like, what movie should I go see with the family on Thanksgiving? I love, by the way, it's like one of my favorite things. I love to see a movie after Thanksgiving dinner. Love to do that. But no, I've already seen this. I've already seen this. No, I don't want to watch Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. I want to watch a new movie in the theater. No, Charlie Brown. I also don't even like Charlie Brown, and I don't care about football on Thanksgiving if the Kelseys aren't playing. If they are, me watch. If they aren't, me not watch. But Charlie Brown is very boring. It's a very boring show. The only redeemable character in Charlie Brown is the pig pen character. Because he is me, and he has that little dust dirt cloud that follows him around, and he drags his filthy, stinky blanket, and that is me every day. Even around the office, that's me. I am down bad for Jacob Elordi, and if you're not, if you don't know who that is, then you need to get edumacated, A-S-A-P. Go see Priscilla after Thanksgiving with your family. Squeeze juice! Today's Politics Live is brought to you by Squeeze Juice. They're 100% non-GMO, no water added, not from concentrate juice. It is literally as if you squeezed it into the bottle yourself, except you don't have to. Squeeze Juice will pump free, little baby. Pump free, little baby. Ain't nothing but a pulp free squeeze juice. Bottled in pee-pee. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Bottled in BPA free bottles. That was a very unfortunate choice of words for something you eat or drink. Bottled in BPA free bottles on a small conservative owned family farm in California. You can get 25% off your squeeze juice by going to shop.squeezedjuice.com with code Alex. 25% off this hunk of burning love. Is that Elvis? 25% off shop squeeze shop.squeezejuice.com code Alex and we'll put the link in the chat. It comes to your house on non-toxic frozen ice in two days. So just make sure that you're home at some point because you are gonna want to put that in the fridge as soon as possible. It comes fast because it's fresh. Shop.squeezejuice.com with code Alex. This is the immunity juice. It's perfect. It's got mandarin, ginger, and carrot, and turmeric, habanero, pepper, apple puree. And vitamin C, that's literally it. I mean, it's literally just whole ingredients. There is nothing weird in here. Nothing. That's why I like it. Bada bing. What? Bada. Bada boom, bada bing. No pee pee in this juice. No, none at all. Mr. Beast has been slammed for helping the poor. Can you imagine? 
What do we always what do we always hear? The complaints are like we shouldn't have billionaires and millionaires and you know you're, that's too rich for your own good and they need to be helping the poor. We need to be helping the poor. Then one of them actually does it and then you know that's not the right thing. So and it's not the the criticisms are not what you I know what you're expecting. You're like they're mad just because he filmed it. Oh no. It's way juicier than that. It's way juicier than that, and it is way more than what you're imagining, I can promise you. Because when I saw this at first, I had to do like a triple take. I couldn't even believe what I was seeing. Mr. Beast has been slammed for helping the poor, and it is, is it, and it isn't what you think. Clean drinking water is racist. Clean drinking water is racist. According to the internet. According to CNN, American YouTuber Mr. Beast's latest video in which he says he built 100 wells in Africa has drawn a complex response online since it was published on Saturday. The new wells will provide clean drinking water for up to 500,000 people in Cameroon, Kenya, Somalia, Uganda, and Zimbabwe. The video also shows Mr. Beast donating supplies to Kenyan schools like new furniture, soccer balls, computers, whiteboards, and projectors. He built a bridge across some kind of river to safely connect a village with the local schools and hospital. And he donated bikes to a village in Zimbabwe. I got to say it like that to help children get to school. Now explain to me. So far, do you see any red flags? No. No. Oh, wait. Hold on. Mr. Beast is being criticized for his charity work in Africa because he's white. Saran Kaba Jones, Saran Kaba Jones, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Saren Kaba Jones, the founder and CEO of an organization called Face Africa. Uh, it's a, it sounds like a nonprofit that helps improve water infrastructure and sanitation in sub-Saharan Africa. She told CNN, well, I've been doing this for 15 years, but we've been struggling to continue the work because funding, awareness and advocacy all take work. Then she added overnight this person comes along he gets all of the attention who happens to be a white male figure with a huge platform it's frustrating but it's also just understanding the nature of how the world is mammy pee pee poo poo pee pee poo poo a white man helped above the poor What do you mean he's white? What does that have to do with anything? Could it be, perhaps, now this is crazy, maybe I'm going out on a limb. Could it be that Mr. Beast is getting more attention for uh, get drawing eyes to the problems in Africa, not because he's white, but because he's the most popular YouTuber on the planet? More than 200 million subscribers. That wouldn't be a little piddly diddly in a bucket for you? That doesn't ring any bells. Maybe that's why he's drawing so much attention. Maybe that's why people are talking about, oh, Africa has a lot of issues. I didn't know that. Because 200 people, 200 million people are subscribed. 200 million people are subscribed to this man's channel. He does charity work in Africa, draws attention to problems that they're having in the way things are run. But because he's white and a man, it's racist. Gets crazier. You're like, whoa, that's crazy. Oh, but it's worse. It gets worse. So not only, and then when she said this, this woman, you know, a whole bunch of people were like, I agree, I agree. Others were upset that Mr. Beast, by doing this charity work, highlighted the failures of the Kenyan government. They said, this is maintaining stereotypes that Africa is dependent on handouts and philanthropic intervention. Because they are! How 
dare you do charity in Africa and, and show how the government there has failed their people. Now you're a racist because you're white and you've drawn attention to a, a, a black government. It's like the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life that it's so hard for me to wrap my mind around how stupid it is. I genuinely, like, this is stupid. Genuinely want to know the, the IQ level of these people that are saying this stuff. Genuinely. I'm so curious to know. And let's just take a few seconds and look at, the, at just, a, a, just a little bit of his video, okay? Let's just take a look. This is the first of a hundred wells we're gonna build in this video. Oh, water! Oh, oh, crap! You just witnessed a small village in Kenya get access to unlimited clean drinking water in less than a second. One down, 99 more wells in Africa to go. You're gonna love this video. It's right! This is what I, when I read people's tweets that say stuff like this, this is how I imagine them. <laughs> Old man yelling at the sky. <laughs> That's what they do. I'm just processing. I'm just, and here's, here's the best part. The best part of all of this drama and the video itself is that Mr. Beast proved that the billions of dollars of these left wing ran nonprofits that, you know, they, they always beg everybody to give to because they're, you know, allegedly helping Africa and all this. They're all scams. Mr. Beast revealed that they actually do nothing. They've done nothing. And so he said, I'm actually going to do it. And now he's being criticized for shining light on these cockroaches, on the grifters. And that's all it is. People are mad because people are going to be like, why am I giving all this money every year to your stupid organization that has done nothing? I can just, you know, I can donate to Mr. Beast. He'll do it. Good. Now we're picky about who does charity. Now we're picky. I would love, you know, go to in, in, in different countries or help, even within our own country, help people that are struggling with poverty, homelessness, hunger. Do you think uh, somebody who is starving, uh, if you offer them food, they're going to say, well, what race are you first? I don't know that I can accept. Sorry, you're white. I'm black. I don't want your food. I will starve. Thank you. Bye bye. Asian person. Ah, I'm so sorry. You're black and you're trying to help me. I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. She's black. You're white. Ah, I, I'm just, I've just, I would rather starve. Well, I guess. Patrick Dempsey was named People Magazine's sexiest man alive for 2023. Patrick Dempsey is the sexiest man alive in 2023. 2005 called. They want their sexiest man alive back. What in the hell? Welcome to geriatric foster care. Patrick Dempsey is People Magazine's sexiest man alive. I'm as confused as you are. Who is picking these men? They really just be out here naming anybody. Anybody. How about we do Lance Bass next? Lance Bass next year. How about? Who's that guy that like plays the husband on the like R Roseanne reboot? That guy. We should name him also. His name is John, I think. What what is the metric for for how we're measuring who gets to be sexiest man alive over at people these days? They're just like, hey, whoever's in their AARP era, let's get them. Who is that? Who's in their AARP era? Patrick Dempsey. Let's get him. Maybe silver foxes are having a moment, but again. 
I don't understand. Um, here's a little, there's a little video I have. Uh, I don't even think there's noise. It's just like showing him filming the cover or something like that. Show that. Because that's, okay. There is a little video you can play. Um, I would like to know who the better contenders would have been in the chat. I am voting Jacob Elordi, duh. Pedro Pascal or whatever, he would have been good. I mean, truly, Perry the Platypus or whatever from like Phineas and Ferb would have been a better fit. I, I just, the Patrick Dempsey of it all is sh so absurd. Maybe that's the, 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 the catch is they're like, well, what people are going to talk about it because they're all going to disagree. Like maybe that's the game is that every year let's pick somebody who's really off the radar, you know, that people are not expecting because we would expect a Jacob Elordi. We wouldn't expect a Patrick Dempsey. I am not saying this man is not drop dead gorgeous hot. It's just like so out of the pop culture moment. Why would we pick him? And he is way old. And and it's like at his height. I mean, I'm saying 2005 McDreamy, whatever. Like, why would you do that now? Am I missing something? If maybe you like this choice. Glenn Powell. Would have, you know, of course, supported my... My man's Jason Kelsey. Henry Cavill. Yeah. Any of these people would have been better. Miles Teller absolutely would have been would have been better. Uh, it's not McDreamy. Hey, it's just it doesn't make sense. But Chelsea says he is absolutely and finally deserving. Well, Marlo says it's just like how they choose who's going to perform at the Super Bowl halftime shows. That is so true. Like the usher of it all for Super Bowl halftime show next year. It's like the hype is in the negatives for that. No one is excited about Usher at all. It, they're scraping the bottom of the barrel of like who is culturally relevant. And then whoever is barely above surface are like, let's pick them. So they pick Usher. Just bad, 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 bad. Lily says we should have done Matt Reif, LOL. No, no, he's too niche. He's too niche. This has got to be better than him, but he that is funny. I mean, it could happen. Matt Reif has to get bigger, though. He's got to, and I'm sure it's happening. It's in the works. Maybe with the writer strike, things got put on hold. But I wouldn't be sh surprised if in the next two years we get some kind of rom-com starring him as the lead because he is so ungodly attractive and just interesting looking and you know women are obsessed with him it would be very smart and he's funny obviously because he's a comedian it would be very 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 smart to cast him I mean for Pete's sake literally pun not even intended for Pete's sake if you're gonna cast Pete Davidson in rom-coms you can cast Matt Reif now quickly Kim Kardashian, uh, I have a theory. I think that Kim Kardashian is trying to play by play copy Taylor Swift. I think she is immensely jealous of the level of fame that Taylor Swift is at. I think it's it is so uh, universally beloved, you know, um, more money than ever, billionaire status, all of the, all of these types of things, a highly publicized relationship, paparazzi can't give enough, get enough. It's giving very Victoria Beckham, you know, uh, David Beckham vibes from the nineties. I think that Kim Kardashian is so freaking jealous of Taylor Swift. And I think that she is kicking herself for allowing, especially now that she's not married to Kanye anymore, allowing Kanye and Taylor's beef to get between her and Taylor. Because Kim's thing is always reinventing, always trying to be relevant. Uh, got to keep that bag. Got to keep that fame. Uh, that's the only way that Kim feels any self-worth is how much she is being praised and talked about and emulated. And there is no one in the world who is who is getting attention like that more than Taylor Swift at the moment. I think that Kim is like, and that's why she posted on her story a few weeks ago, she used Taylor Swift's song Speak Now as the, the music on her story. I think it's all part of a little olive branch, you know, throwing little things out there into the ether to see if Taylor will reciprocate and have her people reach out to Kim and be like, hey, let's let's set up a chat, a meeting. Taylor would never do it, 
But Kim Kardashian is waiting with bated breath, I believe, for a phone call saying Taylor Swift, her people are wanting to get in contact with you. She wants to meet with you and talk, talk things out. Kim is just praying that this happens. Um, And so because of this, because she is so feeling um, second best right now, she's feeling like she's she's riding the coattails as is every other celebrity to Taylor Swift. I think she is going to be copying her um, a lot to try to garner up the same type of attention in the media. And by and one of the ways she's going to do that is date an NFL player. Kim Kardashian has been rumored out of absolute nowhere to be dating Odell Beckham Jr. He is NFL, right? Did I say this right? Is it NFL? Ex-NFL. Okay, yeah. So, like, athlete, though. And she was seen at his birthday party in NYC on Monday. Uh, That's after rumors started that they have been hanging out. It's all, it's all a ploy to try to become the next it couple. I'm telling you right now, that's what all of this is. I don't even know. Maybe she does like Odell. Maybe she doesn't. But either way, she's thinking, I wonder if I can get the same type of attention as Taylor dating an athlete. So I just wanted to throw that out there. I thought it was interesting that, you know, this, this is all starting this week, this this storyline for her. Tomorrow, this new Spillover episode comes out. It is all about birth. It is the biggest birth episode ever. It's long. It's, uh, we're comparing and contrasting a hospital birth to home birth. Um, I have an OBGYN coming on who a lot of you already know who it is. You've guessed it. So uh, I'm very excited. You guys are very excited. Huge, huge, huge guest phenomenal guest who is very pro home birth after working as an OBGYN for decades in a traditional hospital setting and then switched over to helping and assisting midwives, um, helping people specifically do breech births and uh, twin births and stuff like that, VBACs at home. So Everything about birth and what's really fun about the episode is, yes, we talk about the differences between, uh, you know, the medicalized birthing atmosphere and stuff that we all know and then in home birth. And so talking about those two things, that's the first half of the episode. But then the second half of the episode is all rapid fire questions about all things having to do with birth. Everything, you know, from preeclampsia to episiotomies to to is there ever is there ever such a thing as you know a baby that's too big to be to be birthed vaginally all these different I I ask everything everything like I said it is a long giant size episode so that I could get to all of the questions that I had you guys submit way back I said if I were to you know ask some questions about birth what are all of your biggest questions and so this is an episode really I'm just the middleman asking things for you now I will be making a video responding to the reaction that my Costi Hin interview got. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am going to do that. I will be responding to the reaction that my Costi Hint interview got. It will be out as soon as we can get it filmed and edited. I think we're filming it tomorrow, so hopefully it'll be edited by early next week. It will drop on the Real Alex Clark YouTube channel. You want to make sure that you're subscribed to that so that you don't miss it. Also, I just dropped yesterday a new episode. I looked through the ingredient lists for super popular, super popular, fast, casual chains, Uh, you know, Domino or no, Papa John's, Chipotle, Panera Bread, Subway, Chick-fil-A. Yes, Um, Chick-fil-A. I I went through the ingredient list to find out out of these who is actually a healthier option for fast food and who isn't. The episode is very funny. My editor was like, I want to go full crazy crackhead energy on this with the memes and stuff. So it's like a fun, it's a very fun, fast fast paced episode where I go through all these restaurants and I'm like, here's the truth. The answers to who is actually healthier and who isn't is shocking. 
I went into this before even looking up the ingredients. I was like, here's my predictions. These restaurants are going to be terrible. These are going to be good. The answers, what I found out, it was complete opposite of what I thought it was going to be. So that's super fun. Real Alex Clark YouTube. You can watch it right now. It's already up. It's uh, like, what are the what are the healthiest fast food? I don't even know. I don't know what the title is, but it's like the most recent video. So you won't miss it. Um, but yes, the spillover of it all. New episode tomorrow, but also uh, a video reacting to your reactions to the Costi Hinn interview will be out probably early next week because we are off on Friday for Veterans Day. We're observing Veterans Day. Perks of working at a conservative-owned company. Very fun perks. We also uh, work on Juneteenth because we don't believe in that fake farce of a holiday but we do get martin luther or not well we do get martin luther king but we get oh columbus day we get columbus day off we work on juneteenth we're off on columbus day and we're off uh in observance of veterans day don't you love to see it make sure you're subscribed to my channel and uh, thumbs up this video it's pop culture without the propaganda i'm alex clark and this is politics